Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today played 19 seasons in the NHL. He's a Stanley Cup champion, an eight-time All-Star, and a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Currently, he's the president of the LA Kings. Luke Robitaille, so good to meet you. Very nice to meet you. That is a resume. You've got uh, a, a list there. Uh, it's a lot of years, though. <laughs> <laughs> Spanned out over some yeah. years. Speaking of years, mm -hmm. um, I am a big video game fan. And when I told people that you were coming on the show, I think the most popular question I got asked was about NHL 94. And that yeah, was very legendary. That's true. I was a legend in yes. that game. <laughs> it had nothing to do with me. Uh, that's funny. Uh, to this day, I get like adults, obviously. They'll mm -hmm. come in and go, I. Ah, I never seen you play, but you're my favorite. I'm like, why is that? Because then I also say, because of 94, they go, yeah. And what it was is uh, at the time, there was only, I think, three programmers for, for the game, and they told them, you're gonna watch each, each of your team, and you gotta pick one or two guys and pick something that's special about them. And the guy that was, this is when San Jose started, so he got the West Coast Division or the Western Division, and when he, he was a big Kings fan, and the Kings game that he saw, I got three goals. The next game, two goals. And another game, I got a hat trick. So he, he I, I was a glitch on the system. But basically, every time I shot, I couldn't miss. Because the games he saw <laughs> me. So anybody that, that played the game and knew that, they would pick me. They couldn't lose the game, you know. There was a, the other guy that was a real glitch. Uh, Gretzky, obviously, was the other guy on our team on the game that mm -hmm. had a special pass. But Jeremy Roenick, if you made him spin, he'd always scored. But me, <laughs> I, I could shoot from anywhere on the game, and, I, and I, would, I would score, so. Do you play as yourself? No, but no? <laughs> too many buttons. I want like, I grew up in Space Invaders, Galaga, and okay. it was like one button, and you just. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> so you wound up being drafted in the ninth round mm -hmm. by the Kings, and I think like one of the reasons people say that you fell that far down it was, was far. your. It was, it was far. It was far down. Yeah, <laughs> was because of your poor skating ability. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that was accurate? Oh yes, it was. Okay. I mean, there, there's even apparently scouting reports where the scouts wrote, uh, wrote that uh, I was slower than the Zamboni. If you ever seen oh, Zamboni, I know the ice, Zamboni you know? is. So they ranked me as a he's slower wow. than the Zamboni, and uh, so yeah. I mean, you know, I didn't feel that way, but it's certainly what everybody was saying. So how did you overcome that? <laughs> I, I just, you know, it's like that book Outliers. You just practice ten thousand hour, and you're going to be good. So. My whole career, even, you know, you said I played 19 years, but I was really in the NHL for 20. We had a lockout. My last year, I was still taking power skating lesson. I was still working on, on trying to get quicker every day. And I just worked at it every day throughout my whole career. And I was never the fastest, but I got there quick enough to, yeah. to, to well, listen, get results. Your, your rookie year, you were rookie of the year. You had mm -hmm. 45 goals. Did you have a kind of like a memory that stuck, stood out for you from that first year? Uh, well, I would say my first game. Your first game, you, you're a kid, you're playing a game. Next thing you know, you, you realize you make the team. It was so important for me just to, to make the team and then stepping on the ice. And it was at the great Western form at the, day, at the time. And, uh, and then my first game, though, we didn't get on the ice for about four minutes, and my center was Marcel Dion. He kept saying, calm down, kid, calm down, kid. Mm. And I was like, you could see I was so pumped. And I literally jumped on the ice, and I went to the front of the net, and the goalie made a mistake. He threw it to him by the board. His name was Marcel Dion, so I yelled to him in front. I go, Marcel. And he passed it to me, and I tipped it to an empty net. So it was kind of cool. My first shift on the ice, I went to the front of the net and scored. <laughs> that is the most amazing thing that could happen. Oh, it probably it the greatest gave you feeling. A ton of confidence too, oh, yeah. right? It's it's totally a game changer because suddenly you, look, this is easy. <laughs> yeah, right. You're like I can do this all the time. I can do this. Rookie of the year. Here we come. <laughs> Your third season with the Kings. That's when Wayne Gretzky was traded from yeah. Edmonton. What was your reaction when you heard that? Well, for me. When I was 13, Gretzky came in the league at 18. I think I was 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And that's the player I picked. Like, I couldn't believe how different he was, how great he was. So I idolized him. You know, 13, 14 years old. And everything he did, I wanted to do. I watched his commercials, everything. So then, then you put that, like, like, like seven, seven, eight years later, yeah, eight years, whatever, later, and, he, he, you know, I'm playing with him. I'm going to play with my idol. And it, it, was, it wasn't easy for me, though, because, you know, they say you should never meet your idol because you're going to see their yeah. flaws. Like, 
It's just, he wasn't allowed in my world to swear, and uh, any ho good hockey players will swear. And I was like, "You swearing? Like my idol swearing?" Wait, what do you mean weird. it wasn't allowed in your world to swear? Well, because he was, I idolized him. You know, Wayne Gretzky oh. was everything to me. So now I'm playing with him, and he's like talking, and he's like just a normal human being. He wants to be a normal human being, but to me, that was my idol. So it was really. It was difficult almost for me to separate like the, the fact that I idolized the guy yeah. to being the guy that I was playing with. Didn't yeah. your coach actually have to make a line change? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he did. He, Explain he why. So I, I was excited too. Everybody said I was gonna play with them. I had been scoring goals, so I started the season. And But you gotta remember, I idolized him. So growing up, I wanted <laughs> to do everything he did. So on a two-on-one, -on -one, Wayne Gretzky was the best playmaker mm -hmm. in the history of the game. So. We're getting a couple games in, and every time I'd get the puck, I'd look for Wayne because I knew he was he was my guy, but I knew he was the best player too. So we get on the two and one, and I want to give him a pass like he could do, and he got cut in the middle. So he comes back to the bench, and he's really nice to me. He's just hey, he goes hey, Lucky, that was my nickname. He says uh, next time just give it to me early because don't worry, I'll give it back to you. You know, I'll give it back to you. And he's right, he's Wayne Gretzky, he's gonna give it back yeah. to me. And he's not saying it in any way, just saying like, we'll score for sure if you give it to me. From then on, I was like, okay, oh, okay, okay, Wayne. <laughs> and every time I got the puck, it was like a grenade. I'd be like, just throwing it at him. And poor guy was just like getting pucks from ever because I just wanted to make sure like every, I was doing everything right. So finally the coach says, look, I know you love Wayne, but you can't play with him. <laughs> You're not being yourself. So he take me. He took me off the line for a while. Then a little bit later, like a few months later, it took a few months. Then he put me back on the line. But by that time, I was like, okay, he is a human being. I gotta treat yeah. him a little bit like he's a normal guy. I mean, I get it. It's Wayne Gretzky. I know. He's the greatest <laughs> player ever. Yeah, that that happens. <laughs> So, but then in the 92-93 season, he got hurt, mm -hmm. and you wound up becoming the captain for the Kings, and then for the first time in Kings history, they made the Stanley Cup Finals. Mm -hmm. What was the thing that stuck out for you from that run? Well, I think the biggest thing is when Wayne got hurt, because before that, every year we were one of the contenders, and when he got hurt, everybody says, we're out. We're not gonna make the playoffs. This team is done. We'd just gotten a new coach, and, uh, when Wayne got hurt, we learned to play without him. So we weren't, we were just a bunch of, not misfits, but different players, and we had to play real hard. And then he suddenly came back, and by the time he came back, we were playing a real fast team game, and then you add the best player in the world, you're gonna accomplish a lot of great things, and, and that's how we kind of took it to the next level. We, we would have never made it to the final if it weren't for Wayne coming back, and. But it, it was a terrible injury because we, we didn't know, there was a lot of talk he might have to retire and so mm -hmm. forth. So we really never knew what was gonna happen. But when he came back in January, like it, it kind of gave such a jolt to our team. And then we suddenly went on a run. By the time we got to the playoffs, it, we were like on a good run and we made it all the way to the finals. So in 94, you're traded to Pittsburgh. Yep. You were not happy about this because you thought you were gonna be with the Kings your entire career. Mm -hmm. Do you know why you were traded? Uh, at the time, like like our management was lost, and I was asked to do a few things, and I said I don't think I could do that. And uh, and then uh, you know, pr looking back, it was the greatest thing that happened in my career because then when you get traded and you go to other organization, you mm -hmm. learn different things, you become a different player, and so forth. Uh, and for me to get traded, even though I wasn't happy because, you know, I always felt like, you know, you, wherever you start, you feel that's your organization and so forth. It, it was a good thing for me, like when it happened. Your one year in Pittsburgh, what was it like playing with Yager? It was, it was amazing. This was really his coming out season. He had had like a really good run. They had won the cup a couple of times and, but he was the kid and that was kind of his coming out. He led the league in scoring that year. Ron Francis was on that team. Uh, Al Samuelson, they, you know, they Larry Murphy. They had a lot of great players, and uh, it was it was kind of fun. He dominated the league that year. It was amazing how good he was. Did know? he also play a practical joke on your son? Yeah, he was. <laughs> even though he, he was coming out, he was maybe 23 at the time. He, he was still a little kid. He's still a kid right now. Yeah. I, would, I would bring my son to the to the game. He'd always he'd always stay late and practice, and I would too. And he had done a couple jokes. He'd put some uh, Vaseline in his shoes and he'd done a couple things with my son and he put something in a towel. So I told my son, we'll, we'll get him because the Yags had the long hair. So we waited and we put the uh, baby powder in the, in the hair dryer 
and we weighed him for him after a shower. Oh. We put the, he went with the hair dryer. That's a good one. My son liked that one, too. Yeah, I'm going to remember that. Okay. More with Hall of Famer Luke Robitaille when we come back. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game, on FS1 to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.